Welcome to my beginner's guide for Diablo 3. We're going to start by introducing some of the major differences between Diablo 2 and the new third game. Unlike Diablo 2, skills are no longer a permanent investment. You can respec as many times as you like, and abilities can be switched on the fly. There's only one catch. Once you change the skill, there's a small cooldown window before you can start using it. Attributes like Strength and Dexterity now automatically distribute on your character. Stat allocation is still very alive though. In Diablo 3, you'll be using gems to customize your preferred attributes. In Diablo 2, there were 5 different gem levels, but in 3, there's 14. So they have a much greater impact on your gear than in the previous game. Attributes are also more simplified than on Diablo 2. Wizards and Witch Doctors mostly want Intellect, Monks and Demon Hunters want Dexterity, and Barbarians want Strength. Of course, Vitality will still be a major stat on all five classes. All abilities now scale off weapon damage. Also, faster weapons are going to increase your ability speed, whereas slow weapons make them hit a lot harder. There's no skill tree anymore. Now you customize your abilities using rune stones. Each rune stone changes an ability or gives it an added effect. For a full list of runes, you can check the description below and play around with the skill calculators. Shrines now buff all players, but have a limited range. Make sure not to pop the shrine until all your party members are close by. Loot is instanced, meaning no one else can see your item drops, so no need to race into that pack of mobs to grab a shiny item. Take your time and avoid the embarrassing death. Gameplay is pretty straightforward, so I'll just introduce you to some of the more obscure tips to help you start off. When you mouse over a skill, you can hold down control to see a more advanced tooltip. It will give you specific details about your abilities that the normal tooltip does not normally show. You can customize your banner at the character select screen. By default, you can press G in game to show off your awesome EP to your friends. Normally, certain abilities are locked to specific keys. You can change this by going to Options, Gameplay, and checking off the Elective Mode box. This will let you use any skill from any category on any button you wish. This is definitely more useful at higher levels of the game when you want full control over all of your abilities. Your Stash, Blacksmith Level, and Gold are all stored globally. Increasing them on one character does so for all your classes. Don't immediately burn all your gold on increasing the stash size. Remember you'll have 8 character slots, and you can use their inventory to store items until you have a comfortable amount of gold saved up. While in town, you can fast travel to other players by clicking on their banner next to the waypoint. When you first start, don't sell the blue magical items. Keep them for your blacksmith. Magic items can be salvaged later and are used to craft new, more powerful weapons and armor. When you click on the waypoint, you'll see an icon of a golden chalice. This is the nearest portal to your current quest and where you should head if you ever find yourself lost. The more players there are in the game, the more health monsters have. So for maximum experience, you want a full group that moves together. This way enemies die quickly and you gain levels faster. Try not to split up. Since monsters have more health, Soloing your way through content in a party is inefficient and burdens the other players. Lastly, we're going to talk about your keyboard setup. Most of your time in Diablo will be spent moving and using abilities. By default, your skills are bound to 1, 2, 3, and 4. This puts your left hand in a pretty awkward position, especially if you're using shift to attack. For a more comfortable position, try rebinding your skills to Q, W, E, and R. This is a layout most mobile players should be familiar with. Those four keys aren't bound to anything particularly important, so don't worry too much about what default commands are being written over. ASDF is another popular alternative to the Q, W, E, R layout, and it's lower on the keyboard. 
You may want to try this if you have small hands or a large keyboard. I strongly advise you to try these two layouts when you start playing Diablo 3. They should help reduce finger strain and feel more natural than the default key bindings. I also strongly recommend you bind the forced attack key to the space bar. Simply go into key bindings and find the shift key, then add space as the second shortcut. This will let you use either your thumb or your pinky to force attacks. Remember to have fun when the game goes live, and hopefully these tips help you along your way to Inferno. Good luck with that shit.